This one involves the space shuttle. We worked on this one in class. So um, if you weren't in class, I'm just going to show you this for your benefit. And that is the thickness, which is 2 centimeters, is shown here. That's the distance through which the heat passes. The heat is only going to go through the cross-sectional area. It doesn't come out the sides in this problem. So you simply take the length and the width given in the problem to find the area here, 6.4 times 10 to the minus third meters squared. Uh, this answer is found by doing all of this work here. General, general expression for heat flux is shown. You're actually looking for the rate, which is Q over T. So you solve for Q over T over here by multiplying both sides of this times A. There's A right there. Area times the thermal conductivity of the uh, silicon material, silicon dioxide material used in the space shuttle. And it uh, looks like the thermal conductivity is given right there. So that's K. We have area from up here. And X is also up here. And then we take the difference in temperature from the inside and outside of the shuttle. And that is this uh, and that, the difference between those two, which is 1,500. So showing all of our work, cross-sectional area, thermal conductivity, temperature difference, distance over which it travels. Make sure you can do the calculator work and get an answer in joules per second. That's the heat flow that these things must be able to uh, handle and transmit. All right, on the last one, an engineer is performing a laboratory studies and wishes to uh, have a constant benzene flow. And here's the rate that they're looking for. Jump down here to the bottom and it says what's the required length. And you can see oops, that this is a, a fluid flow problem just by looking at the statement of the problem. So here's the fluid flow equation. So the unknown that you're looking for is the x. That's the distance over which it travels. Cross-sectional area is right there. So if you solve for x, again, I'm going to do it in one step. But if you need more than one step, I'll be sure to take your time and do that. I'm going to pull x to the other side so that I have a times delta p over 8 pi times the viscosity. And then I'm going to pull v down here. And I'm going to pull area to the top, making it area squared, and then also times time. Now, there's one unfortunate thing that kind of happened unexpectedly there, and that is they don't give you the volume or time. They give you volume over time. So I'm going to do a clever regrouping for you. And this is area, delta P. And then I'm going to divide top and bottom by T. So that's a legal mathematical maneuver if I put V over T. So I, I multiply top by 1 over T. I multiply bottom by 1 over T. I did all of that so that I can figure out what that constant is right here. So the distance, and this is with the work you have to complete. Oh, don't forget the square. Um, let's see, how do we find the area? Da, 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 da. I see the pressure. It's a constant here. Okay. Okay, there it is, the diameter. So I guess we can say somewhere off to the side, area equals pi r squared equals pi d squared over 4. So uh, calculate the area as an aside using this small capillary tube that they're using. And the difference in pressure is the difference between this and that. And the viscosity is given here. That's the mu that goes down like that. So it looks like you have everything that you need. Area is over here. Change in pressure is the difference between those two. And um, V over T is given up here going to go in parentheses, and mu is right there. That's the viscosity of benzene. Hope this helps. Make sure you uh, review this uh, equation sheet. I will give it to you, but I want you to make sure that you can use all of these tools given on this one. Be sure to see me for um, office hours if you need any help with the homework. And um, also consider using the ARC, which is available from 6 to 8 on Monday through Thursday.